Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. After a very active day, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We continue again to see the possibility of some less active weather in our immediate future. But as we go into the course of the next couple of days, we could be looking again at the possibility of some more rainfall coming our direction. Uh, maybe another couple of inches of rainfall. We'll talk more about that potential coming up here in just a little bit. Again, if you're in the area for today and would like to give us an idea as to where you are, again, uh, city state information and again, what was going on today. Maybe you got some rain in the rain gauge. If you got some damage around your area, uh, give us an idea as to what you saw. And again, maybe current conditions. Let's Again, see what's going on out there for the time being across much of the Mid-South area. If you've never been here before, again, welcome to Weather Overtime. It's our online exclusive video weather blog. We try to do this uh, every weekend a couple of times to let you know what's going on and to ask questions. So again, uh, drop that information into the comments section down underneath. You can catch the forecast in the blue bar at the bottom of your screen scrolling on by if you can't stick around for the whole thing. Or you can go to, again, this website down in the corner, wreg.com slash weather, if you'd like to see a little bit more about the forecast and get all other kinds of details about things going on. Coming up, we'll talk about damage reports from the area today what we know so far and what we're probably going to be seeing in the next about 24 hours as we get some more surveys out there. Some tornadoes did touch down today, so, but not as many as possible, and there was a good reason for that, and very grateful that it happened that way because never do I root for the possibility of more severe weather out there, and nice to see the things did not quite turn out as destructive as they could have been. So again, we'll talk more about that here in just a little bit, so stick around for more on that. Plus, if you'd like to know more about Skywarn and how you can get ready for severe weather in case what happened today happens again, we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Thanks to everybody who stuck around again for our Facebook broadcast for this afternoon during the severe weather. Our netcast uh, had some internet issues with the Wi-Fi here at News Channel 3. It had some problems with the handshake, so uh, did not get a chance to get everybody in for the entire thing, but a uh, decent experiment, and again, sorry for the volume problems, but they, we'll get those hammered out in the near future, and we'll do more of those uh, as we are able to do so. Don't forget to set that clock forward one hour tonight. Daylight saving time begins, and so that means sunrise will be a little later tomorrow at about 7.18 in the morning. Drying out and cooling off a few clouds from time to time, but most of all the cloud cover is going to be gone for most of the area. We'll see a little bit more cloud cover off and on into tomorrow. And there will be some chances of rain early, but just not that much going on uh, at this point in time out there. 61 degrees, a light breeze and cold water. Brandy Merriman, thank you very much uh, for that report at this point in time. Welcome to everybody else. Uh, who's checking in for tonight. Glad to have you along, and thanks to everybody who uh, watched the severe weather coverage into and around the area uh, for today. We're looking again at a high temperature in the country, highest temperature out there in the continental U.S., Santa Ana National Wildlife Reserve in Texas. Managed to get up to the century mark for today. Meanwhile, in Elk Park, Montana, coldest spot in the continental United States, got down to negative 15 degrees, so quite a difference out there for the hours. And looking again at about a half an inch of rainfall, so that keeps us about five inches above normal for the year. Inch point 42 for the month, Fort just shy of 15 inches for the year. 67 are high, a little bit above normal. 53 are low, way above normal for this time of the year. But looking pretty nice out there again where the rainfall is concerned and getting rid of all of that. Taking a look off to the southeast from the metro area, watching the area right above the horizon, some thunderstorms off into around uh, northeastern Mississippi, making their way out of the picture toward Alabama. But every once in a while, you can see again a bit of a flash of lightning just over the horizon. Getting a little faint right now as those storms move out of the picture. And most of the area for right now, uh, seeing what's left of those storms, mainly just showers at this time. If you'd like to see a bit of a time lapse of what this looked like earlier with a couple of flashes of lightning out there, head to my social media pages and you can find out a little bit more about what that looks like out across the area. Uh, again, a great way to see lightning out on the horizon. It is not heat lightning. There is no such thing as heat lightning. It's just thunderstorms that are too far away for you to hear thunder. Technically, yes, heat does generate them, but heat does not specifically cause the lightning. You're just looking at thunderstorms off the away from the horizon 
And again, it's heat lightning is not a thing. It does not exist. There went a good flash uh, right there. So we do have some thunderstorms still out there in that direction. Uh, crescent moon sinking down toward the southwestern horizon. So you might be able to see a little bit of that going on from our Hilton East Memphis camera from the towers at Poplar and Mendenhall back toward downtown, clearing out nicely for tonight. So things are looking a little bit more palatable out there and things again starting to get a little bit quieter as we go throughout the rest of the evening at this point in time. Michael Wilson, rain and wind in East Chicago, 43 degrees. Uh, thank you very much for that report from up north. Thanks for sticking around for our report here on News Channel 3. Appreciate that. Joyce Johnson Berry, 61 degrees in Crenshaw, Mississippi. Thank you for that weather report. Looking toward areas of northern Mississippi from east of Oxford, there's those thunderstorms that we saw on the horizon and the lightning from those moving away from us toward the east. So Alabama, Russellville, Florence, north of Hamilton at Double Springs picking up again some decent amounts of lightning, but that's all on the way out of here. The tornado watch has been canceled. The wind advisory has canceled, so we have little, if anything, left over from earlier today in the way of advisories as drier air makes its way into the Mid-South. Latest storm system is again swinging on through the area, and we're not seeing anything in the way of winter weather either. That is well back up to our north, so not a threat from there at this time. Heading east or southeast tonight, you may run into a few more of those thunderstorms out there. Now, damage from across the area, quite a lot, again, reported in and around northeastern Arkansas, and a couple of very good pieces of video from earlier today around Slovak, Arkansas, reported and confirmed a touchdown just south of I-40, uh, confirmed by video, actually a couple of those uh, videos reported out there, including one around Carlisle, Arkansas, in Prairie County. That also seen on video for today. So a little bit more activity early this morning and limited back into portions of east central Arkansas, east of Little Rock. Now into and around the area, just north of Ripley, Mississippi, around Faulkner. Reports of tornado damage taking place, at least, well, no damage reported as of the time that this tornado uh, touched down, but some wires reported down in some parts of the area and around Faulkner in Tippa County, uh, 2.5 miles west of Faulkner. Again, brief tornado touchdown reported there. So we did have confirmed tornadoes in the News Channel 3 viewing area. So those tornado watches were justified and well-placed by the Storm Prediction Center and the National Weather Service. So everything went roughly according to plan, but we did not get quite as much in the way of severe weather. Why was that? Well, because about 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere, we had a layer of warm air. It was called a cap, and that did a good job of kind of stopping anything from developing those bubbles of air bubbling up to create those thunderstorms. They have to go to a certain height or, again, above that cap to bubble up into more thunderstorms well up into the atmosphere. Well, if that cap doesn't let the thunderstorms translate that energy down to the ground, we get rotation up above that warm air, but we don't get much of anything down toward the ground. So that warm air layer about a mile up in the atmosphere did a very good job of making certain that things were not quite as terrible as they could have been today. So that is excellent news for everybody in the Mid-South area. We got severe weather, confirmed on that. We were accurate about that. We let you know about the potential of it, but fortunately the storms chose not to live up to that potential. So very good news on that. Rest of the area, again, wind damage and hail. If you are traveling tonight, definitely want to keep an eye around the curves or over the hill as you're heading in some places because there could be wind-blown debris out there. And where you think it's going to be a clear roadway could be junk that has been blown in there by some of these storms out there. So something to keep in mind if you're traveling late tonight or early tomorrow morning, especially losing an hour of sleep. You're going to be possibly groggy, not paying attention out there. So now's the time to really think about extending your uh, road trip. Don't be in a rush. Look around you. Keep an eye as to what's going on just to be on the safe side because the damage from these storms is still being tallied and we don't have everything on the list here, but we'll keep you updated on what goes on out there throughout the rest of the evening. Wind gusts in the far right-hand column, 50 miles per hour reported around Cross County High School in Cherry Valley, Arkansas, one mile below that. 
one mile per hour below that in the News Channel 3 backyard. Elsewhere across the area, lower 40s to mid to upper 40 mile per hour wind gusts out there. So we are, again, seeing a very mild evening for right now. But temperatures, again, back in the lower to mid 60s. Rest of the evening, again, should be looking at some cooler weather coming on through. Drier air sneaking in from out west. Showers could linger into early tomorrow morning for northwest Alabama and east central Mississippi. But everything else should be gone at this time as we go into tomorrow. Mostly clear skies should be a good first day of daylight saving time. And then tomorrow, again, a little bit more the uh, cloud cover out there. The gray colors, that's where we start to see more clouds across the Mid-South off and on through tomorrow afternoon. And then by tomorrow evening should be overspreading much of the Mid-South area. And by late tomorrow night could be a few light showers making their way back into the picture. Not a lot, but again by Monday morning, if you don't have spring break this week, the students out there you may see again the need for an umbrella as you head off to school on Monday. And not everybody is taking spring break next week. It's not a mandatory one week, everybody takes it type situation. So yes, before you start emailing, there will be schools that are still in session out there. So please keep that in mind before you send any angry emails telling me, telling me that I'm wrong about the schedule. Thank you very much. Mid 60s tomorrow, mostly sunny early, going toward mostly cloudy later on. By this time tomorrow night, could be a few sprinkles popping up out there. Lower 60s for Monday, mostly cloudy skies, and again, a few sprinkles of rain early in the morning and again late Monday night into Tuesday. That's going to herald in the possibility of even more rainfall, just what we wanted to hear over the next several days. So by the time we hit Wednesday, more thunderstorms possible heading into Thursday. Also some pretty good chances of showers and thunderstorms right into Friday and going from the 70s Wednesday and Thursday into the lower 50s as we go toward next weekend. Here's the good news. As we go toward next weekend, the last weekend of winter, we should be seeing temperatures back in the lower 50s. A little cooler, not bad. A jacket would be a good idea. If it's St. Patrick's Day, make it a green jacket to avoid getting pinched, but otherwise drier conditions heading our direction. And last few days of winter should be pretty mild. Most importantly, should be pretty dry. Bad news, unfortunately, right through here, we see that potential of even more rainfall coming on through. And according to forecasts from the Weather Prediction Center, we just might be looking at about another two to possibly four inches of rainfall coming our direction. So we could see, again, uh, the possibility of some more flooding out there, adding to the flooding, something, again, to keep an eye on if you're driving or working or living in any low-lying areas close to lakes, creeks, streams, rivers, anything like that. Culverts, ditches could fill up very quickly and we could see some more flooding problems out there. So once again, we'll keep our eyes on that. If you'd like to know more about what it's like from our point of view, like from today, again, what it's like to broadcast tornado warnings to the general public and what it's like to think about our own families uh, being safe out there, our new podcast is up and going. It's called Tornado Alert, Emotional Terror. If you'd like to know more about what Jim Jaggers and Tim Simpson go through to talk about severe weather, good opportunity to learn more. Spotify, iTunes, or again, available to listen or download at WREG.com. So if you'd like to check that out, please do so. Point of view that a lot of people don't get a chance to see from your side of the camera looking back here, looking out to what we do to help you understand what's happening. And sometimes there's a lot of surprises along the way that you may not think about what we do here to get things done and to let you know what's going on out there. So again, if you have the opportunity, give it a listen. It's not that long. Great opportunity to learn more. And again, hopefully the first in what will be a series of podcasts. I'll be getting some ideas to our managers about more about what we can look at, not just severe weather, but hopefully a lot of other stuff. So stay tuned. We'll keep you updated on a lot of stuff going on there. Coming up Tuesday evening, you may have just moved to this area of the country and have never experienced severe weather before, so this was probably quite an eye-opener for you. If you'd like to know more about what to do before, during, and after severe weather, there are classes available. They're totally free. They're paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars. You show up, you take the course, you learn more about severe weather. They are taught by the National Weather Service in Memphis by the meteorologists and personnel there. It's called Skywarn. And if you've never heard about this before, it's a great opportunity to serve your community by learning what to look for, what to call, or what to email back to the National Weather Service when severe weather hits. 
because the important thing is that if you're in, let's just say, Millington, and you have a storm that's moving northeast pretty quickly, you can tell the National Weather Service what is going on in a particular area, and they can tell us here at News Channel 3, the authorities, police, fire, highway patrol, hospitals, ambulance drivers, they can get the word out to everybody out there that this storm is heading in this direction at this speed and will affect these areas, and this is what you can provide. You can see stuff on the ground that radar cannot. So ground truth is where you come in to let us know what is happening. So if you can relay, relay that information, damage scene, estimated wind speeds, wall clouds rotating, tornadoes dropping to the ground, flash flooding, all that information can come in very handy. And if you'd like to help out on that, National Weather Service next meeting will be coming up in Blytheville, Arkansas this Tuesday at Arkansas Northeastern College on, at 2501 South Division Street. And again, that's going to be in Mississippi County, Arkansas. There are plenty more coming up over the next few weeks, including the one for Memphis. It'll be in a couple of weeks for Memphis and Shelby County. And again, totally free, Last about an hour and a half. Show up, ask questions, get ready for severe weather. One of the best things you could possibly do to help you, your business, your family, your community by knowing what to do when severe weather hits. So please consider becoming a volunteer storm spotter. Again, one final word on this. Again, right here is the key word. We need spotters out there. Chasers, you do not chase storms unless you have been highly trained by experts, period, end of sentence. Don't argue with me on that. If you don't know what you're doing and you're just gonna go out and chase storms because you think it's a good idea, bad idea, wanna make certain you're trained to know what to do so you don't get into a bad situation. Worse, you don't wanna get somebody else into a bad situation. So spotters, yes. Chasers, when you're an expert, yes. But until then, we need more spotters than anything else. More details at weather.gov slash MEG. If you can't remember that, just go to weather.gov Click on the Mid-South area, and it'll take you to the National Weather Service in Memphis, and then click on the headline at the top of the page, and that'll give you the information right there. Coming up in about a half an hour, we'll do a quick check of weather around the world, including around areas like Diego Garcia. If you have friends or loved ones serving in the military, we'll take a look at temperatures there, 83 degrees early Sunday morning and mostly cloudy skies, so some very nice tropical weather going on in that area. Rest of the forecast toward tomorrow morning, temperatures will briefly dip into the mid-40s, mostly clear to partly cloudy getting into early tomorrow morning, but otherwise some very mild conditions out there as we go into the rest of the day. My forecast on the radio, Oldies 102.3 and Country 92.5 on the East Arkansas Broadcast Network stations. And again, I'll have more coming up on my Facebook page at about a quarter till 9 o'clock tonight, also on Periscope and Twitter, so stick around for more there. Got anything in the way of weather pictures from today? We'd love to see them excuse me, and show them. So send them to uh, wreg.com, austin.onic on, at wreg.com. If you've got the email address, you can send them. You can tweet them to me. You can post them on my Facebook page. You can share them on Instagram. We'll do our best to share as many as possible as we go throughout the rest of the next couple of days. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more damage reports out there as we get into the next few days as well. So stay tuned for more on that. Stay tuned for more. We'll have an update on News Channel 3 coming up at 10. And Todd Demers will be in on Sunday morning to start your latter half of the weekend out on daybreak. That'll be at 6 a.m. on Sunday. Thanks a lot for joining us. And stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3. Live and direct, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, USA. Stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend. And thanks for joining us for tonight's Weather Overtime.